didn't you didn't check it in, Riley? Come on, dude. He didn't. He didn't check it in. <laughs> I'm trying to stay focused, and I can't. <laughs> stages of working on something um working on what it's uh uh I'm, I'm messing around with the drill Ooh. yeah there are gonna be some some changes to the drill coming up that sounds nice i think people are gonna like it yeah uh we won't reveal too much but we won't reveal too much uh i, I feel like i always say that but yeah uh well i i will say that one of the things uh i'll give you the the I'll give you the, the first thing, the, the, the little tidbit of... Um, the juicy nugget? The juicy nugget. Uh, it does involve nuggets, and it, it involves the resource nuggets. Uh, right now, the drill doesn't work like the, um, the deform tool. Right. Uh, the deform tool, if you're sucking up different resources, it has kind of like an internal catalog of mm -hmm. all of the resources that you've in progress, and then when you finally fill one up, it pops it out. The drill doesn't do that. Um, it just has like two slots that it puts whatever you're uh, trying to collect in. So you can end up getting partial uh, resource nuggets out of it, which kind of break the game. Pretty useless. Uh, pretty useless. You can't do anything with them. So I'm uh, changing the drill uh, to work like the deform tool. Nice. Um, yeah, and so it's it, it's it'll be more useful. And then uh, I'm doing other stuff with it too. <laughs> that, and that stuff is secret. But... So at least it will be somewhat useful and then you're then you're scheming on some other ways to make it more useful even more useful exactly and fun yeah okay cool we'll, we'll follow up with you again soon i guess yep okay bye, bye. <laughs> so um uh, beacons now have a button on them to change the color. Nice. Yeah, let's see. Next one, I think. This is a much requested feature, by the way. Yes, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty fun, actually. Did you make it always pulse? Not, well, it, this, this one color in particular pulses right. and the rest don't. So if you, this is like your emergency beacon. So that activation button just cycles through them. Yeah, pretty yeah. simple. Yeah. Just set something you want and go away. Yeah, uh, people are ha we're asking about this just because of navigation. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Yep, pretty cool. Sweet. Okay, I'll stop bothering you now. Thanks yeah. for all right. Go away. Thanks for See the history later. lesson <laughs> and the talk. Okay, bye. <laughs> all right, sir. The day has finally come. The day has come. Uh, please introduce yourself once again. I'm Aaron, one of our technical designers. Yes. And I am showing off a big new feature for the game that we've kind of had internal for a while under wraps. So I'm pretty excited to show this off. So for a long time, one of the things that we've really wanted to kind of integrate more into the larger game loops is this core thing of terrain deforming. It's a thing that you're doing all the time. But aside from occasionally picking up big resource deposits, it doesn't really play into any of the game systems. And so this is the, the first step in, in the direction of integrating that more completely into the rest of our, our game dynamics, which is the resourcification of our terrain. So you can deform like you normally would, but the big change is as you're deforming, you now have a canister that can receive the terrain that you're, you're removing, and you'll be able to use that as a resource in a number of different ways. The primary use is in order to add terrain, you'll now be pulling from those canisters. So you can see the amount has dropped ever so slightly. Right. What that allows us to do is remove power is the primary constraint on your deformation. So you'll see as I'm deforming here, the battery on my backpack isn't going down at all. And there's two pieces to that. One is that also lets us drop the trickle charge, which is, I think, always been kind of a band-aid fix for us, where we didn't want you to get stuck and then just, you know, waiting to suffocate or, or worse, if you had a tether line going, you'd just have to 
sit there watching your backpack slowly take up in order so you could get out. Um, and so taking that away means that we lose that, that disruption to the really kind of smooth gameplay dynamics that we have with the terrain deformation. You can just kind of keep going while you're removing terrain without any limits. Right. And that also means that without the trickle charge in the bag, power doesn't become an infinite resource, and so we can use it in a lot of other situations without worrying that you're going to use up power on other things and, and no longer be able to deform. So it, it, it gives us the opportunity for power to become a much more interesting resource in a lot of different areas. And one of the, the first examples of this that we're toying with is augments themselves will use power. So I've got a broad augment equipped, and you'll see now the battery is once again draining. And then when I stop, it's not going to start ticking up again. So without the augment equipped, power is no longer in use. The other step is having the terrain as a constraint on adding terrain means that you can still have some of that um, push and pull and not just be able to you know, completely OP blaze through the world, but it's limited to more of a constructive mindset. <coughs> So you can freely tunnel through, but if you want to start building ramps or filling in holes, you have to be aware of that resource. Right. And once you fill up the canisters that you have, you'll see a little effect there indicating that you're burning off any new terrain you're getting. So there's permanent loss of that resource. Aside from being a resource for deforming, we're also looking to use it in the crafting system. And this is kind of a first pass at that really just being an experiment with what that can look like. It's not necessarily a long-term design that we're going to keep, but it can point towards some of the, the uses that you can have for terrain. So this is the sediment filter. I've already kind of pre-filled this with a bunch of canisters. So conveniently, this will fill it up the rest of the way. And once you have the filter full, you can put down a resource. We'll, uh, or compound in, for example. And kind of like the trade platform, that's going to convert sediment into whatever resource you've placed here. And there's limits on that. It's, it's only going to be resources that you can harvest from the environment, so no refined metals or anything like that. And the amount that you get back is based on the rarity of that resource. So in the case of compound, that's going to produce, I think, four blocks off of that full tank of sediment. Got it. Be able to, you know, harvest up some terrain in order to build some ramps out. I can also equip multiple canisters and bring it back here to get access to resources that maybe I'm having trouble finding. Right. So the other piece of that now is we're introducing a reusable canister instead of a consumable. And you'll use that for not just terrain, but any kind of liquid resource going forward. And right now, we're extending that to our use with hydrazine. So instead of harvesting hydrazine straight from the environment, you'll now harvest ammonium, which you can bring to a refinery module. And again, rather than just creating canisters by creating hydrazine, you'll need to provide an empty canister to the, the module. And then that'll go from your ammonium into refined hydrazine. And so these canisters are generic across any liquid resource. So if I drain this hydrazine, it'll go empty again, and I can use that to fill it up with sediment instead. And so the final piece of this is the fuel condenser. In order to give you more value in harvesting the ammonium and, and producing hydrazine from that, we don't want the, the fuel condenser to be quite as OP as it's been in the past. And so what we're doing with um, the fuel condenser is it's not going to fill an entire canister from one pass on the battery, but we're also playing with the idea of a bit of a streaming economy. So as soon as the battery is fully drained here, if you have an attached hydrazine canister that's not entirely empty, as soon as this battery fills up again and we'll speed it up a little bit. 
it's going to automatically trigger again. So if you have your hydrazine farm set up with the condensers, you're not going to have to walk around hitting the button constantly just to get an individual canister. Got it. And that'll keep going until the canister is full, and then you'll have to swap in a, a fresh one. So those are the major components of this update. We're, we're really wanting to treat it as kind of the foundation for an entire new system in the game. Um, and just hopefully push this out to our experimental branch in the near future so we can start getting feedback on it, see what people are really liking about it, what's not working so well, and then hopefully start building on this in a lot of new interesting ways going forward. Right, so uh, I, I overheard some of those interesting ways that, were, that people were mentioning could be really cool. Um, I guess the one question I have is, now that uh, terrain becomes a, a resource, is there any thought behind maybe thinking about terrain, terrain itself as being different kinds of resources, not just one? Yeah, yeah. So we're we're starting right now with just kind of a neutral, um, generic resource type for terrain, um, and there's mostly technical reasons for that. Right. But long term, the the hope is that you'll actually have terrain have different kinds of resource deposits baked into it. And so the different kinds of terrain that you, you gather will give you different kinds of resource yields. Right. Um, and we're still really early in the, the kind of design phase of what that's going to look like and how you store different kinds of um, terrain types. You know, one thing we, we want to avoid, and one of the reasons that it's generic right now, is because you need a um, individual canister to hold terrain now, you don't want your backpack filled up with you know, a dozen different canisters, each holding a different kind right. of terrain in it, right? Yeah. And so what that looks like, whether we have some kind of, you know, pancake style of, of different terrains in a given canister, or that maybe you gather generic terrain by default and you use the analyzer to, to gather a specific type separately. Right. Totally kind of up in the air right now and, and something that we're going to start exploring once this initial framework is in place. Yeah, it seems like then the, the, you know, terrain being a part of the gameplay becomes even more important because now you can say, oh, well, there's a certain type of terrain over here and I really want a lot of that, so I'm gonna build a base and start farming it because that's what I want. Absolutely. This looks really great. Um, um, thanks for showing it off. Yeah, I, I'm it. really excited. I can't wait to, to see what people think of this. It's it's definitely a change, so I'm, I'm eager to see how how people take to it. And uh, I guess the last, last thing we can say, and you already mentioned it, is uh, the hope is to have this in an experimental branch of the game and let people try it out and give us feedback on it uh, fairly soon. Yeah, yeah. in the next week or two, we should be rolling that out. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. All right. See you guys next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.